On the hit list this time, a bunch of big hitters who know all about the pleasures and pitfalls of life as a teenage star. Teen diva Gabriella Chilmi grew up outside Melbourne in Australia, but she had to fly halfway around the world to land a record deal. At the age of 13, after being offered four major contracts in the US, she chose to sign with Island Records in the UK. Four years later, Gabriella's debut album, Lessons to be Learned, was released, and her debut single, Sweet About Me, started rising up the charts. In August, she proved she could hold her own with the Verve and the Kings of Leon, with her live set at the V Festival in Staffordshire. Yeah, I think it's really, really fun. It's really cool to play to a crowd that, you know, don't, you know, I guess some of them probably wouldn't be familiar with the rest of your tunes, and it's a way to kind of show them. So it's cool, and yeah, I get to check out the other acts, which is pretty sweet. Um, just hang around, lots of food, lots of music, two of my favourite things in one place. Very nice. In October, she was back in her home country after being nominated for a staggering six record industry awards. Yeah, I was pretty surprised at that. And it actually puts a bit more kind of pressure on me, so it probably would have been nicer if I got a few less, not really. But. She ended up converting all six nominations into awards, including Best Female Artist and Breakthrough Album, as well as highest selling single for the smash Sweet About Me. Two months later, she capped that high with a nomination for Best International Artist at the 2009 Brit Awards. She couldn't quite believe her luck as she walked the red carpet on the way into London's Roundhouse. Um, yeah, really, really awesome. Just like I never expected a nomination, like you know, for, for the Brits, but it's just like just really, really cool. I'm like, really excited. I just got told this before, and the lady who like announced it to me was like, "Oh, you just, you've been nominated for Best International Female." Like she didn't even like put it on an exciting voice, so it kind of just it was like a shock kind of thing. I was like, "Oh," so um, still kind of sinking in, but it's really cool. At just 17 years of age, she was already learning to talk the talk about the outfit. So the look, so I'm doing a Beyonce because my mummy made my dress and uh, these shoes are Luella, I'm obsessed with Luella, she's awesome and all my jewellery is by this lady named Fiorina and she's an Aussie designer so um, you can never have too much bling. Apparently Zac Efron hasn't always been a big hit with the girls. According to Zac himself, it wasn't that long ago that he had to chase girls to get them to go out with him. These days, he has pinups like Megan Fox chasing after him. Zac Efron is my obsession. He's here. In fact, the Transformers star is so obsessed with him, she claims to be his twin. What you don't know is that Zac Efron and I are the same person. He, we're not here, we're not actually here. It's like Janet and Michael. We are the same person. He just puts on his wig and a dress, and it's me, and you don't know that, and it's the greatest ruse of all time. Ironically, when Zach won the part of Troy Bolton in High School Musical, he had low expectations. There was little or no hype during the filming, and the movie didn't immediately take off upon its first release. But within a matter of weeks, two songs recorded by Zach for the movie soundtrack went gangbusters on the charts. Breaking Free, Zach's duet with Vanessa Hudgens, rose from number 85 to number 4 in only two weeks, making it the fastest climb in the history of the Billboard charts. By August 2006, the album had been certified triple platinum. High School Musical 2 premiered on the Disney Channel in August 2007, and it was the most watched basic cable program in US history, with 17.2 million viewers and Zach became the most searched celebrity on IMDb. Oh, oh High School Musical is everything you know, for me. It, it got me started. This is the only reason that any of, I'm sure that you even want to interview me. <laughs> so I'm very grateful. How can I be anything but? And he was keen to string out the good times for as long as possible. Uh, there are plans for High School Musical 3. Right now it's in development. And um, who knows? Hopefully we can make it happen. 
Not only had the high school musical Gravy Train delivered the 19-year-old Californian fame beyond his wildest dreams, it had also brought him real-life romance with his HSM co-star Vanessa Hudgens and a raft of lucrative sponsorships, not to mention the opportunity to go racing in a brand new Audi. A few of the, my Audi friends asked if I wanted to come and race these cars. Um, I had no idea, however, that I'd be racing an R8. This is insane. It's like a completely different animal. Since the release of High School Musical 3, Zach has been working on his starring role in another comedy set in a high school called 17 Again. It takes many celebrities a lifetime to learn how to deal with the press. But Miley Cyrus had it all worked out by the time she turned 16. For me, I've always said, um, no matter what, if I want respect, um, I, have to, I have to respect other people. So I've been very respectful to them and try to give them as much, um, you know, inside scoop as possible. So I hope that they'll continue to respect me as much as I have them. She'd managed to keep smiling through media rumors that she'd fallen pregnant to her then boyfriend, Nick Jonas. The devout Christian also kept cool over the furore that erupted over the publication of a photo of her draped in a bedsheet in Vanity Fair. But then the star of Hannah Montana did have a great teacher in Father Billy Ray, whose number one hit, Achy Breaky Heart, turned him into headline news in the 80s. His moment in the sun has been easily eclipsed by his chart-topping daughter, who earned $25 million in 2008. Not content with becoming Disney's number one acting and singing star on the back of the Hannah Montana series, Miley was determined to prove she could make hit records on her own. On her second solo album, Breakout, she co-wrote eight of the 13 songs. It was long, you know, writing them all out. I would be like falling asleep during writing my songs, but I was like, gotta finish. So I guess just staying up late and writing music no matter what, because you're never off the clock when you're doing an album. Her next big challenge was to lend her voice to a lead character in the Disney animation feature, Bolt. She also sang and co-wrote the song Lost You, which landed her a nomination for a Golden Globe. I was in my bed, <laughs> like sleeping, and my phones are ringing. And I was like, what the heck? And I went and picked up my phone, I was like, had a bajillion texts, and I was like, oh my gosh, it's so cool. But it was too early, and now it's starting to kick in, now that I'm starting to talk about it, so I'm excited. Not that she'd set her sights on being acknowledged. I don't really keep up with those things, because I feel like then that's what it's about when you're writing a song or something, the only reason you're writing it is because you want a nomination, or you want something, it should be because you want people to hear your music, and you want people to be inspired, not because you want something, you know, an award. Having so much so young, can there be anything left? Hopefully just a lot of things, you know. Hopefully I don't get to stuck to the same routine. I want to travel a little bit more and uh, I'd love to go on another tour. So hopefully I mean just keep doing what I'm doing and finding new ways to make it fun. Rather like Zac Efron, the Jonas Brothers can't go anywhere without being screamed at. Before when we were standing around, we were like, wow, this is a lot going on. We were kind of blown away. It was pretty amazing. We were having a blast. Since rocketing to fame on the back of their self-titled album and their support tour of Miley Cyrus, Kevin, Joe and Nick have scored their own headlining tour, a 3D concert film and a television series. So how do they keep it real? There's kind of one rule that we've all lived by and that's um, live the bottom even if you're at the top. That's something we just live by since we were young and it keeps you humble and um, we keep each other humble and it's good that we have brothers to do this with. And like fellow Christian Miley Cyrus, the boys have been careful not to fall in with the wrong crowd. We also we surround ourselves with um, people that we know will either be a good influence or you know be that share the mi same mindset as that we do, uh, because that is you know a key ingredient to a downfall is the people that are around you and who are influencing you. So we, we pay very close attention to who that who is around us and who our friends are. It was baby brother Nick's early start in show business that kick-started the group's career. After being discovered singing in a barber shop at the age of six, he'd become a Broadway veteran and was writing his own songs by the time he was 12. Already interested in Nick, Columbia Records were rubbing their hands with delight upon discovering he had two equally talented older brothers at home. Since then, the boys from New Jersey have been living the dream. Living the dream is definitely one of our slogans. It, uh, I don't know, it's definitely one of those things that 
uh, we say before we go on stage every night because it's so true. Uh, for example, last night was definitely one of those moments when we walked on right before the show and we were about to walk on the stage for the first time, you know, here in England, and we were like, wow, this is actually happening, you know, and it's it was an amazing, amazing feeling. Live in the Dream also became the title to their 2008 reality series, which is not to be confused with the Disney Channel movie Camp Rock, in which they play members of a group called Connect Three, or Jonas, the Disney Channel original series, about the boys' attempts to juggle pop stardom with real life. Um, it's, it's funny, like, uh, you, you, really, you really have to like, kind of sit back sometimes and take it all in. You know, whenever you play a show in front of a lot of people and other than you, you dreamed about playing one time, you have to kind of sit back and be like, man, like this is actually happening. Few people can lay claim to having led lives of such interest to the general public to warrant an autobiography by the age of 14. But by then, Welsh child star Charlotte Church had already sold millions of albums and become a household name around the world. She'd sung for the Queen, the Pope and Bill Clinton, but the little girl who wowed the world with her arias and religious songs hadn't started out wanting to be a classical singer. When I was eight, I was singing, I was belting big Whitney Houston songs out because my auntie Caroline's a professional cabaret singer in Wales and um, because she had nodules at quite a young age, she said to my mum, you know, I think you should take her to a singing teacher. And so I went to uh, Louise Ryan, who is now my singing teacher. By the grand old age of 16, she'd had enough operatic hits to release a best of album and was ready to break out into pop. Although her 2005 album, Tissues and Issues, did nowhere near as big business as her classical releases, Charlotte's rambunctious personality and the media's obsession with her private life have kept her top of mind in the public consciousness. In 2005, she was named GQ magazine's Woman of the Year, and in 2006, she landed her own talk and sketch show. But unlike Miley Cyrus, she's not all that comfortable with the constant media attention. I can't stand photographers. <laughs> They're outside my house every day. And it just gets to be a drain. Like, the, you, there's, you can say, oh, yeah, I don't read it, so it doesn't really bother me, to a point, but, you know... It does get to be a dream when it's constant and it's all the time. Having said that, she was happy to spill the beans on her relationship with rugby player Gavin Henson. And he's fabulous and I love him to bits and he deals with everything really well. So um, it, it does put added pressure on, but nothing that we can't cope with. She was keeping mum the year after when it was announced that she and Gavin were having a baby. And at the Glamour Awards ceremony in 2007, she duly put the brakes on the partying. I want you all to get drunk and have a fair few drinks for me, you <laughs> After giving birth to baby Ruby in September, she fell pregnant again with son Dexter, who was born in January 2009. <laughs> Ashley Tisdale is just one of 14 stars to bolt out of the high school musical stable. Along with Zac Efron, Vanessa Hudgens and Corbin Bleu, the former Ford model was flung into the spotlight thanks to the wildly popular response to the first instalment in the HSM franchise after it aired on the Disney Channel in 2005. The builder's daughter from Monmouth County had already cut her acting teeth on various guest roles on TV and in 2004 she was cast in the role of Maddie Fitzpatrick in the series The Sweet Life of Zack and Cody. But it wasn't until she minced out as the mouthy Sharpe Evans in High School Musical that her career as a singer took off. By 2006, she had a record deal with Warner Brothers, and her first album, Headstrong, debuted at number five on the Billboard 200. She toured to promote the album not long after finishing up with High School Musical The Concert. Then, after the release of High School Musical 2, she was back out on the road to promote the bonus-packed DVD. Um, well, you're going to find uh, music videos, you're going to find a rehearsal cam, which takes you from the beginning of rehearsal to the finished product. You're going to find, um, oh, a new number, actually, like a, a musical number between me and Ryan that's performed for Troy called Huma Huma Nuka Nuka Apu Wa. It's on the CD, and it's a, now you can finally see it in the movie. So it's, it's exciting, and also the movie, of course. 
That level of energy and enthusiasm has powered the young star through endless launches, premieres and award shows over the past four years. And arriving at the Emmys as a star of three nominated shows, she was showing no signs of slowing down. It's really exciting. I think it's like just one step closer to, you know, best actress of the Emmys. You know? I'm like, I've always, you know, I've always really, my goal is to win an Emmy one day. So, um, so I, you know, getting, you know, one step closer to it, having three shows nominated is pretty cool, so, you know, who can say that? <laughs> and like fellow teen queen Miley Cyrus, she's preparing for that big moment by getting very serious about her red carpet fashion choices. Um, it's a mandalay dress, Stuart Weissman shoes and Chanel jewelry. Um, I, uh, my stylist came over and had tons of dresses and I really wanted something that was, you know, rockish, glittery, girly glam and this, this was it. <laughs> This was amazing. I was like, this is exactly what I'm thinking. New kid on the block, David Archuleta, forged his path to early fame through the treacherous territory of the grueling reality talent show American Idol. Having avoided eviction and survived Simon Cowell, he made it to the final two on the seventh series of the show in 2008. Ahead of the grand final, there were plenty of people putting their money on the 17-year-old from Miami. Well, I think David Archuleta, he's a lot more wholesome. He's a lot um, more appealing to younger kids and to their moms, very non-threatening. And, you know, could definitely fit in well with, like, the high school musical crowd or just, you know, his, he could be a good pop star in that sense. He's very clean cut. You know, he's cute, but in a non-threatening kind of way. Um, he's not really a man yet. The top honors ended up going to 25-year-old David Cook, but Archie was still a hero in his hometown. The fact that the pint-sized popster was able to sing at all was something of a miracle, after he suffered partial vocal paralysis but declined risky surgery. Early on in the show, his version of John Lennon's Imagine earned him the title of the one to beat. When he ended up losing out to David Cook, he was under no illusions about his chances of making it in the real world. <laughs> Just, I really want to make an album and see how that turns out. And if music um, doesn't go as far as I was hoping it would be, I, then I will focus on, hope, you know, I still want to complete an education and, uh, <laughs> yeah. You know, school's really important, especially after all this ends, you don't, you know, it'd be nice to make a living off of it, but you never know. For the time being, he was going to make hay while the sun shone. Soon, he'd released a self-titled album and taken on the challenge of filming a video clip. You know, it was a lot of fun. I was a little nervous at first because I was wondering, oh, am I going to be able to pull it off? I don't know if I'm a very good actor or anything like that. <laughs> but it, it, was, it was really easy and it was a lot of fun to do. And I think it, it went really smoothly. And uh, it was just a lot of fun to be able to, you know, get into character and the story of the whole thing and uh, be able to kind of like work with other kids my age in the music video. Suddenly, everyone wanted a piece of him. I guess I never realized that it would actually happen to me the way it has. And that's pretty crazy to see how it goes. And you know, with all the, with all the gossip and rumors and uh, uh, celebrity stories and people always want to know everything about, your, about what's going on with every little bit of your life. But <laughs> I guess that's what comes with the, this whole thing. Rihanna is the first artist from Barbados to win a Grammy Award. She took out that honor for Best Rap Collaboration for her single Umbrella in 2008 at the age of 20. The award came almost a year to the day since she'd first heard the song that went on to become a worldwide number one. It's funny because I heard the song the night before the Grammys. And I knew, I just knew I wanted this song. I was just like, this song is mine. I have to have it. I listened to it all day at the Grammy, you know, the, getting ready for the Grammys. I prayed about it, camera fingers crossed. I had a lot of people fighting for it behind me. And we eventually got it. No doubt it was that determination, along with Rihanna's talent and beauty queen looks, that persuaded Jay-Z to sign her to Def Jam Records at the age of 15. Her debut album, Music of the Sun, spawned the hit Ponder Replay, and she got to ditch school and moved to New York. I hated school. Um, even though I had a lot of friends at school, like, just the idea of having to go to school 
that's the worst thing. <laughs> but thank God, I still do school, but it's one-on-one -on -one with a tutor and mm -hmm. it's a lot easier and a lot better that way. And I'm still, you know, pursuing a career and living a dream at the same time at 17 years old. And all without any formal training. I used to listen to Beyonce growing up. I used to listen to a lot of Destiny's Child and Mariah Carey and Whitney Houston. And I was influenced highly by those artists, R&B artists, of course. So that's why I sing a lot of R&B over reggae beats. Dancing, it was just always a part of my culture. So I didn't go to dance classes or dance lessons. I just grew up dancing because it was a part of the Barbadian and the Caribbean culture. Two years later, the schoolgirl was all grown up. Her third album, Good Girl Gone Bad, brought with it a radical change of image. I grew a lot, you know, I, I got tired of that generic image that I used to have and I just wanted to be a lot more edgy, I wanted to be funky, I wanted to do me in it and have more fun with my image, you know. It wasn't fun before, it was just one strict thing. Now I can do whatever I want and it's kind of just being rebellious, I just don't care who likes it. Who hates it? I, I like it and that's what matters. I just want to do what I want. Her rebelliousness earned her eight hit singles, a romance with fellow teen star Chris Brown, a Grammy Award and the Venus Breeze title of Celebrity with the Best Legs. When asked how she earned the coveted title once held by Mariah Carey, she was happy to give away her secret. Lots of cardio. Cardio is the secret to great legs. Native New Yorker Emmy Rossum seemed to come from nowhere to star in the 2004 big screen version of Andrew Lloyd Webber's stage musical Phantom of the Opera. However, despite the fact that she was only 18 years old at the time, she'd already made quite a splash in the opera world. The story goes that she was invited to join the Metropolitan Children's Chorus at the age of seven, after singing Happy Birthday in 12 different keys. As a teenager, she sang six languages in 20 operas at the Met, before turning her attention to screen acting. In the year 2000, Variety magazine named her one of 10 to watch, after her debut big screen performance in Songcatcher. No wonder she felt quite at home on the set of Phantom. You know, it's one of the exciting things about working on a show with like big, big sets and big costumes and period costumes is it kind of feels like I'm back at the opera, especially when you're with such beautiful music. Her role as Christine was a great test of her all-round performance skills. I do. I do sing and I do dance and I act as well. No, she doesn't. She's terrible. <laughs> she can't sing. However, she did have to face her own phantom upon stepping into the shoes of Sarah Brightman, who originally played the role on stage. Was she nervous? You know, I suppose initially, yes, but I had never seen the stage show and I actually, I still haven't. So, you know, I had no preconceptions of what she had originally been created like, so I just took her from my heart and hoped that all of the old fans would be happy. After the demands of Phantom, one might have expected her next big film, a remake of the Poseidon Adventure, to be a walk in the park. It was the hardest thing I've ever had to do physically, learning how to scuba dive and free dive and things I'd never done before. Um, and coming from Phantom of the Opera, which was so pretty and, and you know, singing and sucked into those corsets. Here I just had to be raw and emotional and they threw me in the tank and that was my hair and makeup. After that, she got down to the rather drier business of recording her debut album, Inside Out. In 2009, she made a glamorous return to the big screen in Dragon Ball Evolution.